Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and we used to be able to do this. Where now we can do this because this is Air Windows doubly three. Now let me show you what we're dealing with here. I just showed you doubly two with a bunch of highs added using the encode amount. If you don't do that, it sounds a little bit more normal. Sounds kind of like this. The thing is, the type of processing I'm using to do doubly in doubly two is not really compression. It's like a transfer function thing. It's like a saturation type effect, but only on highs. And that has caused people's reactions towards it regarding like aliasing. You listen to it, and then if you boost the highs like this, well, that's real aggressive and stuff, but that's not necessarily realistic. However, if we go with W3, and that one looks like this, doubly three is designed to again act pretty normal but then if you boost the highs on this you might also notice that it is laid out kind of differently in fact i'll i'll let doubly two just be its own thing and if you want to learn about that you can go back to its video but what this one is about We've got an input, tilt, shape, and output. And I'll show you what those things do. Input is the same as tape drive in 2Tape7. You're going to be getting a new 2Tape very soon. In fact, immediately after this, I just have to get it together, finish building it and all. And it will have, just like this, input in the beginning and output on the end. Both of those will let you cut the volume all the way to nothing. or crank them up to stupid loud. I showed you a little bit more about tilt, but what you might not realize is that tilt is affecting both the amplitude of the encode and the decode. Similarly to shape, it's moving them in opposite directions. So if you crank it all the way up, you have all encode and no decode. So it's like a tilty cube, but you can also go the other direction. And that'll give you a darker sound. It is designed to continue to apply the decode at its optimum point. So it'll successfully darken stuff up and that should happen even when pushing the gain. And we'll try that now. That's very different from what I had in doubly two, and that's gonna come in real handy in two tape eight, because using the tilt control and setting it up this way means you can get a extremely huge saturated distorted sound out of it. You might notice this other control here as well, and it is marked a uh, shape. Oh, by the way, also output lets you turn the output right down to nothing, and it'll also let you boost it kind of loud. In 2Tape 8, this output control that you get to boost, boosts into the safety clipper on the end, meaning that you can use it for a sort of little afterburner boost. And what you might ask is this shape control. That is what we're doing with the frequency controls of doubly two. Same deal. It's going to increase one and decrease the other. The effect this has is really striking, so you probably don't want to use too much of it. But what it's going to do, independently of the tilt control, because the tilt control is just going to boost the extreme highs relative to the background of the sound, or 
kind of cut them, suppress them. Shape metals with the balance of the uh, where it crosses over in the mid-range. So what it's going to do is when you boost shape, you get this sort of big enhanced compressed mid-range sound. And if you cut shape, it starts sucking the mid-range out and making it kind of, I don't even know how to describe it, but it'll end up resembling certain classic records. Ones where the noise reduction in the studio at the time might have been tweaked a little bit too far. And I'll show you what that sounds like now as well. All of a sudden you have all this mid-range going on, all of this chug, and that's because it's manipulating the way the compression kicks in. The compression is kicking in at a lower frequency, and then the decode is kicking in at a higher frequency, so it's leaving some mid-range chug in there. And you can exaggerate it. When you exaggerate it all the way, what ends up happening is you're running the compression almost completely full range. And by the way, tilt still works. And then when you cut shape, rather than being this hugely boosted mid-range or just compressed everything kind of sound, when you when you boost it that much, you're basically hyper compressing the entire signal and then not decoding it. But when you decode the entire signal and then don't compress it going in, even stranger things happen. So that's a weird sound of its own. And you can't really treat it as a um, mid-range boost or cut exactly because it's manipulating the place in which the compression for doubly kicks in at each stage. And this is what's going to go into two tape eight to supersede two tape seven. Now, there's also been a bunch of work that has gone into addressing the aliasing and grit of 2Tape7, which is another reason why I'm not replacing 2Tape7 outright, because if you, if you want that sound, you should still be able to have it. I'm not making it go away. But we can do a lot better as far as getting that sort of classic 70s sound going on, whether it's boosting the highs that way or mismatching it a little bit. Or a little of both. Or we can turn it right down and then slam the heck out of it. So that's a lot bigger than uh, W2 or 2 tape 7 is able to get. And I'm going to go back to work because I need to finish up 2 tape 8 using this, which will also mean that 2 tape 8 gets redesigned. It doesn't have the W2 controls for the independent like gain and crossover frequency for each of them separately. Instead, it builds them into tilt and shape, which work together with each other, and they default to 0 0.5, and you can leave it at that. And then it has the input at the top so that you can tell when you're boosting into it. In fact, you get more gain in 2Tape8 than you do in 2Tape7. There's more gain on tap. And then there's an output at the very end because people wanted one. That ought to really do it. The rest of the stuff is going to be the same, but these changes let it really strut its stuff. And I hope you like that coming up next week. 
but this week you can get used to how doubly three works and explore the tones that it can make because basically all the tones that this makes are different from any of the tones doubly two makes because the fundamental process of how it's making the sounds is different now. I hope you like it. And I'll talk to you later. See you next week when two tape eight is ready. I know it's kind of soon after the most recent one, but I think you'll find it will be worth it. Bye-bye.